Hi, it's Elder, and in today's video I want to share with you the whole process of designing a website without any coding. So the process of designing the website is a little bit different depending on wherever it is a recreation of the old website or the creation of the completely new project. But today I need to recreate the existing project, so this is what I'm going to do. So this is the Anastasia website and I have created a while ago, so the design is still kind of fresh, but it is a Blocks 2 project. So I need to create that using the latest version of Blocks 3. So the first thing I usually do is drafting of the site structure and I use my iPad for this. So this time around I already know what kind of structure I want to create so instead of putting together the whole layout and the whole website I will just concentrate on drafting the design for the elements I might want to improve in this new version of this website. So after I have all of the pages and all of the sections planned, I will go to my computer and start to prepare the images for this website. And it can be my own library, because if it is a personal project, I use my own pictures. I also use websites like Pexels, Pixabay or Unsplash to get the copyright-free images you can use for any of these projects. And for all of my projects, I always optimize the images. For the background images, I usually keep them about 2500 pixels wide and for the content images I make them somewhere between 1000 to 1500 pixels wide. And you can use many tools to optimize the images. I just use Pixelmator and I export the images with about 70% quality, which is still look great but much much lighter than the original. And I also use applications like ImageOptim which help you reduce the file size for your images. So after I've done that, I go and open Blocks project, save the project to my folder and I create the, another folder next to this Blocks project and I copy all of the images I prepared to this folder. I do that because when I need to send the project to somebody else or just move it to another computer, I can just archive the whole folder with all of the Blocks projects and all of the content images and just send it all together. So after copying all of the images to this new resources or images folder, I will import these images to Blocks project and from there I will never touch the folder structure or the image file names ever again. Because if you do that, there might be some missing assets error in Blocks, which can be very frustrating. Next, I will create all of the pages and fill them with Blocks, which are basically the website sections. And I will use my iPad to speed up the process and make sure that I don't miss any of the sections for my website. And by the way, because this particular website will be a multilingual website, I will create the English version first. And after I will perfect the English version, I will duplicate it and translate to other languages. So one of the first thing I will do, I will go to project settings and I will make sure that all of the basic settings for my website are right. So I will change the typography, logos and so on. And after I've done that, it's all about designing each and every element or a website. Obviously, I'm not going to do that in this video because it is a very long process. But if you're interested in learning the techniques I'm using to create this kind of websites, I highly recommend you check out the Blocks Master project I have, which is basically the series of video courses designed to help you master your web design skills these Blocks.
So after I design each block and each brick of my website, I will go through each of the blocks, each of the sections and make sure that all of them have IDs because we will use this for our navigation. Because these IDs will act as anchors, so when we click on the link, we will make it scroll down to a particular section of our website. And finally, I will go through each of the breakpoints and make sure that our website looks great on all device sizes. So after I complete the English version of my website, I will just duplicate it and translate the content of the duplicated pages to other languages. Before moving to the final stage of our production process, I always like to edit a few of the default styles we have in blocks. And to do that I will bring a few of custom classes and edit them in custom class editor. I think it is a good topic for the separate video, but basically what I will do is to get rid of the shadow when it comes to navigation and maybe get rid of this blue effect, shadow effect on the form as well as the scroll to top button, I don't think it looks very good in default version. And of course I will make sure that the background color for our mobile navigation, as well as the icons, are the right color and the right size for our website. So we are ready to export our website and I will go to export settings, export this first draft for our website and upload it to the FTP server. On my Mac I will go through each of the sections and check if everything is intact and if there is some issue I will fix it right away and upload the new draft. And I will do that until I get to the perfect state for all of the elements and then I will move to the iPad and check that our website looks great on all device sizes and an iPad can change the width of the window so I can make it almost like mobile phone or I can make it as a desktop or I can change it to be somewhere in between. So finally I will put out my phone and check if this project looks great on mobile devices. And if it is, we are ready to publish our website. So I will go back to my computer and upload the final version of the HTML files we exported from blogs to the public HTML folder on my secure hosting account, which of course was already connected to the domain, which we need to purchase separately. After doing all that, we can get rid of all of the drafts and everything we had in between and just enjoy our live website. So this is my workflow for creating a website and I hope it was helpful to you and if you have any questions, please let me know and I will do my best to help you.